Hey people, this is Rachel at Lipstick and Gelato taking over the Art Stew 52 account for now. Um, this is a new thing that Ray, um, is, Ray Amiette is like our founder and fearless leader and she basically is starting this thing called Tuesday Treats or Tuesday tips and treats and basically it's a time where various ones of the stewards are gonna take over with um, just a conversation with you all um, and some tips about whatever their subject is and for me today I'm gonna be talking and discussing with you guys about creating an artistic lifestyle when it sometimes feels like you don't have time for art um, I am one of the stewards who does not have art as my full-time job. Um, hi, all of you people. Um, yeah, I'm not a full-time artist at all. In fact, art, while I love it, is kind of more of an outlet for me and less of a business, even though I do take and love to work on commissions, um, like illustrations and things like that. So, um, yeah, thanks, Ray. <laughs> Lipstick is kind of my thing, and actually it's going to make an appearance later on in this conversation. Um, but basically, if art is not your thing, your breadwinning business, you know, the thing that keeps you going, it can be really hard, I think, to fit it in to the everyday. Because it's one thing if you're like, hey, I've got a pile of commissions to work through, and you know this is my art time for the day that's great and I love that and like this morning that was me I was working on a commission for a bride that I actually um, was connected with through the art stew so this is networking friends um, but most of the time you know I'm working one of my two part-time jobs or I'm working on my blog because one form of art that I love and practice is cooking and like anything to do with the kitchen. So basically my, my goal and the thing that I would love to do with my life, <laughs> one of the things, is to be a food writer and recipe developer and basically teach everyone how to have creativity in the kitchen so that they can then practice hospitality, connect people across the dinner table and all that stuff. So. Here's the question. What are you to do if you love art, you love creativity, and you don't really have time for it in your life? Um, <laughs> Ray says, I'm gonna be famous. We don't know that, but hey, I think if you just do a thing well and you stay true to yourself and your, your jam, you know what I mean, then the people who love you are gonna find you and it's gonna be great. Um, so first up, I think we need to define art. Um, I was just listening this morning to the Art Stew podcast on Patreon, pa Patreon, whatever, that Brandon Heyman and Ray are putting together and they were basically defining art. Um, and Ray had asked me some time ago to define what, what I think art is. And for me, art is like, Art's creation. So anything you create, I think there's a slight difference between making art and being an artist. You can fight me on this. Um, but art, I think, is, is creation. So whatever you create. And then I think art is also not quite complete until it's been, until it encounters another person who is a creation themselves. So there's like this weird, like, symbiosis where you've got like you know something I make and then you react to it and within that shared perception is like the fullness of the art itself which is all very philosophical and I'm probably gonna get lost in my own train of thought but basically art if it just means creation can be fit in anywhere at any time and it doesn't have to involve pen and ink canvas, sculpting materials, you know, embroidery hoops, anything of that. So first of all, I kind of like split my thoughts into like three categories mainly. Um, 
One of them was places to practice art or occasions to practice art. Um, I think this is where you can have the most fun. Um, some of the things I quickly jotted down were um, your outfit choices. You know, my account is called Lipstick and Gelato because it's two of my favorite things. Um, lipstick and gelato. And, you know, I think that the way you choose to dress, the way you choose to present yourself, it's fun. It's like a piece of art itself every day. Like, you're like, hey, what colors am I going to paint with today? You know, how am I going to compose all these elements into something that looks even better together than it did separately? Um, so your outfit choices. Um, your breakfast. Okay, I'm laughed at and slightly infamous for taking forever with my food and preferring to eat something that looks nice rather than, you know, just taking the same food and piling it on a plate and getting going. I think that food does taste better when it's carefully created and arranged, and I'm willing to spend the extra time because it's like, I find it soothing. It's like a little moment of art for me to be able to be like, hey, I'm going to take a piece of toast and an avocado and an egg, and I'm going to make this look delicious, not for anyone, but myself. And so your, your outfit choices and your breakfast choices, those can be places where you can hide art or where you can practice art. Um, doing something in a tidy way when it would be quicker to do it in a fast way, you know, like folding your laundry really nicely or rearranging your bookshelves. You might not think of it as art, but it really is because art is creating. It's creating something positive and something that is of value. Um, by my definition, and I think it's a definition that you can probably employ. And yeah, yeah, you guys, it's like savoring the moments, um, thinking of it as self-care, but I think it does fall under the umbrella of art. Um, your grocery list. Okay, I like nothing better. I can't think well from things off my phone, so I have to write down a grocery list. And I remember as a child watching my mom um, talk on the phone. I don't know if she was making a grocery list or what, but she would just doodle like on the margins of her grocery lists and her notes. And I just remember loving that. Um, so you don't have to turn your grocery list into an art project, but taking a moment to arrange something in a way that's aesthetically pleasing is art in the everyday. Um, another thing is in your relationships. <laughs> Being mindful. This is something that I'm working on this year. Um, being mindful of how you're interacting with people and making sure that it's, you know, that you're keeping it from being critical or negative. Um, that is a form of art. Relationships are an art form. Um, one of my sisters does not think of herself as being creative or artistic but she is like the queen, the queen at relationships. And I think that's an art form. Um, in fact, this was discussed in the podcast as well. So, um, aw, Ariel, I'm not as good as she is at it, but I am trying to practice mindfulness in my relationships. Um, and then the last one that most people, <laughs> I don't have 11 sisters, I have five sisters and three brothers. Um, but the last place um, where you can practice art in your day-to-day -day is definitely by getting up earlier. I know we all cherish an extra half hour of sleep, but if you're feeling pushed to your limits by schedules and pushed to your limits by the things that you're trying to do and you're like, there's no time for art, there's no time for anything, um, I would just challenge you to maybe go to bed a little earlier so that you could get up a little earlier so that you could create like a space of 20 minutes for a quick sketch or an art project, a photography session, just something. Because I think we get stuck in this consumer mentality of just like taking in all the time and it really shifts your mindset when you can just create something and suddenly place it in the most ridiculous like... I don't know, 
space age, like new age sounding way, you can place it back into the hands of the world, like give something back instead of constantly absorbing and taking in, it really does change you. And, you know, there isn't time for it unless you prioritize it. So that was the first category. Um, Ariel does have the going to bed thing down. She said she's going to start getting up at 2.30 in the morning to make art. You know, at that rate, if you just make your bed, you've made some art. Um, the other thing um, that I was going to talk about are places to hide art. Because um, I'm a big fan of what I call like art dropping or art bombing. Um, which is basically leaving real little tangible pieces of art for other people to find. Um, this is something that I've practiced a little bit that I want to practice more of. And a lot of times I, I suffer from a deplorable overabundance of curiosity. So, um, I sometimes put my Instagram username on the pieces of art that I leave but most of the time I like it to be a secret so I don't often do that um, I kind of want to know who found the piece of art that I left that I dropped um, so I will sometimes put my username on it but most of the time I don't because I feel like I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose of it like a secret drop hi to the new people bye to Ariel I'm glad you came and said hi um, so here are some places that I will drop art. Sometimes I'll send it in a letter in the mail. Everyone loves to get mail that's not junk mail. And it's really rare these days. Like, I've been haunting the mailbox the entire Christmas season. And some good things have come. And then some days are just a disappointment. And I'm mad at the postmaster. Um, so sending art in the mail is amazing because people don't expect to get letters. They don't expect to get art. And they, you know, probably are going to be super surprised if they open up a letter from you, period, let alone a letter that has a sketch or um, a photo print or anything like that inside it. Um, you can leave a note for a stranger. Um, Kate Lang has these things called peach notes that are like these little business card size things. Um, sorry, my hair's scratching my nose. Um, they're like little business cards that say encouraging things on them. So you could leave those at a coffee shop. You could, um, you know, drop stuff off on people's cars, um, within reason. Don't set off the car alarm. I almost did that because I was trying to stuff it behind a handle of a car. Um, but basically just leaving things in public places for people to find, um, you know, even if you don't have any sort of traditional creativity, leave a compliment for somebody. Like, walk up to a stranger and be like, hey, you look really nice today. Or, you know, like say to the person checking you out at the cash register thing <laughs> in the checkout line, like, hey, I love your smile. That's a great smile. Or, you know, just leave something like that because that does positively impact the world around you. Yeah, a library book would be an excellent place, and double points for the fact that the person finding it is probably going to appreciate it, because I feel like libraries, people who still go to them, and people who appreciate art are kind of entwined. Um, it's not always going to be found, I've learned that. Um, last summer, I was in Central Park in New York City, and a wave of nostalgia and verboseness came over me and I was like I'm gonna write a letter and I'm gonna leave it and it's gonna be great for people to find and um you know it's gonna impact somebody's life so I wrote this letter and there were so many people around I couldn't like leave it without people noticing so I just dropped it as I walked and I turned around at the corner of the path as the path was turning and there's a little like janitor man and he picked it up and stuffed it in a trash can. So in the dumps of New York City, some rat who can read is marvelously encouraged by a letter I left. But, you know, most of the times they may get to their, their intended recipient and 
that's awesome. Um, another thing that can be a place of art is a spontaneous act of goodwill, as they say. Um, anything that you don't necessarily need to do, but you do, you know, like letting, letting someone, I love that you guys are loving that story about my tragic letter in Central Park. I still occasionally, I, I didn't put my username, but I put a hashtag on it, and um, I check the hashtag occasionally, but nothing has ever showed up. Um, but yeah, spontaneous acts of goodwill. Um, this could be as simple as letting someone in, in traffic. That is something that none of us want to do, but, you know, it creates literal and figurative space. Um... It could be paying for someone else's coffee. It could be, you know, having a conversation with somebody, like, working at the library and then hearing them say they're tired and then you're like, oh, and you go get a coffee and bring it back to them. Um, this kind of thing really resonates with people. Um, I think it's not as common as it once was, and so, you know... We all want that serendipitous moment in our lives, but I kind of like to say you can be that serendipitous moment in someone else's life. Um, yeah, Ray just said strangers make more of an impact um, on her than they probably realize, and it's true. Um, you never know what your kindness is going to, how it's going to affect people, and we want art to create an impact. I think that's honestly one of the reasons besides expressing ourselves that people create art um you want it to affect people in some way you want it to make people feel something and by that definition acts of goodwill are definitely art because they can change somebody's perspective they can make someone see something they didn't see before and they're super worthwhile um and then my last category before we just have fun and talk to each other um, was places to celebrate art. So we've covered places to practice art, places to hide art, and now um, we're going to cover places to celebrate art or ways to celebrate art. Hi, Janie. Um, one of them is obviously museums. I was, I have a favorite art museum. I'm from the Norfolk, Virginia area, and we have this beautiful art museum with this massive collection of glasswork and sculptures and paintings. We have a tiny little Renoir painting. It was our museum's first piece of impressionistic art and school children raised money to buy it. If that's not like enough to make you tear up, I don't know what is. Um, but they posted a video this morning of their 2017 recap and I was kind of sad to see that in the entire year they had um oh how cool Emily here in Charlottesville gotta hook up because my brother lives kind of near there um and Ray you should definitely come visit I laughed when I heard that in the podcast that you wanted to come visit um but anyway this museum said that their like total number of guests for the last year was 210,000 I don't know if that was unique guests or not um what the heck, y'all? Virginia represent? I love Virginia. I will argue anyone about the point that it's the best state in the Union. Um, oh my gosh, we can just have like a little East Coast stew pot thing. Speaking of stew, I am making butternut squash bisque for lunch. Entirely off topic. Back to the museum. It made me kind of sad that only 200,000 people have visited this amazing museum in the last year. Um, so go to museums. People always talk about going to museums, but actually go to them. A lot of times they're free and your taxpayer dollars um, pay for them. So get your little butts to a museum, celebrate art. Um, this moves me into the next point of appreciating and celebrating other people's work. Um, you know, it's not all about comparing yourself to where they are or where you want to be or even just like celebrating famous art um, I think it's really important to stop and celebrate um, 
each other's art, which is why I love the arts too, because I feel like that's basically the heart of it, is just like being happy with each other for what we're creating and just kind of looking at it and sharing it, not out of like, yeah, tell me how great of an artist I am, but more of like, look at what we made. Isn't this amazing? We can make things and we're constantly getting better. So celebrate with other people, like, you know, puff up their art a little bit, just share links to things that they've created. Um, if you know a musician who's come out with an EP, like, tweet and share the link to their song, their album. Um, whoa, Nashville. Oh, okay. That's another thing entirely. I don't know if it's Jake or Sarah. I'm assuming Sarah because girls camp out on Instagram, but we love you, Brandon, and other people too, who are guys. Um, it can be a challenge, you know, to be in a place that's so creative. <laughs> like, there's almost, okay, see? Got it. Women's intuition. What is this gang sign? I'm not, not, not a gang member. Um, I really, actually, pause a moment, I really appreciate the guys who are part of things like this, because we need you. I honestly, I hate, no offense to girls, I have a lot of sisters, but I hate a room full of only girls. I'm like, okay, I need some guys, I need a different point of view. Um, so your helpful criticism is great for our art. Um, anyway, yeah, it can be overwhelming to be in a place where there's almost too much creativity but no creative community because then you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with myself. Everyone here is better than me. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen La La Land, but it was probably, we don't even have to say probably, it was definitely my favorite movie of 2017. Um, and there's this scene where she's like, I don't know, everyone here is just better than me, and somehow they're, they're prettier than me, but they look exactly like me, but somehow they're just better at it, and so I don't get any of these auditions, and I can feel that way sometimes, if there's a place where there's all creativity and no creative community. Um, but yeah, celebrating each other's work, and also um, valuing each other's work financially, which is why, like, like the patron, Patreon thing is so great, or Kickstarter programs, or just shopping small. Um, because while it's amazing to verbally support each other and have things like the arts do, it's amazing to be able to say, like, yeah, I financially supported this person. Um, or to be able to say things like, um, even if you can't strictly you know, if you're on a tight budget and you can't, like, financially support an artist you love, you can connect artists. Um, someone from the art studio actually connected me with the bride who I'm working with on commissions right now, um, and that was, like, a really generous thing. She was like, hey, I think you two should connect, um, and we did, and that's, like, a project that's in the works right now, which I'm super grateful for, um, so that's another way to celebrate art, um, making time for art and making time for the mindfulness, um, that creating art takes, um, that's also a way to celebrate it, like, because you're prioritizing it, you're giving it value. Time is the one thing that we all have a limited amount of. Yay for mascara coming off. Um, we all have a limited amount of time. So when you choose to spend time with a person or on a thing, you're giving value to that. So a definite way to celebrate art is to make time for it by sacrificing on sleep or by, you know, eating your lunch while you sketch or just as long as you don't drop it on your stuff. I've done that with soup recently and it was not, it was not cool. You don't want to drop soup on an art commission. Um, you know, that's basically my, my thing about art is that you can do it anytime, you can do it anywhere, you can basically, um, sorry, someone in my family is trying to get in, you can basically make whatever you want into art, you can create an artistic life by simply being mindful, 
by taking a little bit of time, um, a little bit extra time to take something that was like a mundane everyday task and turn it into an art or an artistic creation. And art is not a thing exactly as far as being a piece of art. Well, Brandon just made us a French music playlist. I'm all about this because I cook better with French music. It's probably the Julia Child wannabe inside of me. So now that I've rambled on for an exceptionally long time, I don't have a clock, so I don't know how long I've rambled on for, but I want to just hang out with you guys. All of you who are here, I'm so happy you're here, um, and I want to know what is, I guess my first question would be, what is the biggest challenge you face in making time for art? So start commenting, and then I'll read them. We're so happy for Brandon. He's a very helpful chap. He's a good egg. Am I the only person who calls people a good egg? Put your handle in a pinned comment while ask. Ray, you know I'm technologically challenged. Sarah, not Jake and Sarah. Sarah says homework and her real job taking up the time that she would rather spend on art. Yep. Yep. Real life challenges if your art is not your life definitely get in the way. Um. <laughs> Ray, <laughs> you make me laugh. You're so nice to me. Brandon's hard-boiling eggs. That's awesome. Okay. Ariel Bacon, destined to wonder, she just taught me how to make a good soft-boiled eggs. Um, Ray, the question was, what are the biggest challenges to making time for art? Um, a job and small children. Yep, I don't have any children of my own. Um, but I feel you on that because you don't want to just push them aside, but you really want to do your art. And then they want to do your art. I sometimes will paint with my little brother, and when he was younger, he's kind of grown out of it, but he would always like take his paintbrush, and while I wasn't looking, like smear it all over my art, and I'm like, oh, we've, we've gone abstract. Okay. Um, yeah, so Ray, I know that you are an artist professionally, and the arts do is kind of your thing. So you might have less of a problem making time. Um, although I'm sure you have other struggles. Brandon says it's hard to get in the mindset. It's hard to clear his head enough to really focus on creative things. Preach. Preach. It can be hard. Um, I have this weird stage. I'm probably not the only one. A weird stage with every piece of, um, just, like, every piece of art that I make, it goes through the stage of being hideous, or I feel like it's hideous, um, and I want to stop, and so that's a hard stage for me, when I'm like, this is junk, and it's gonna remain junk, um, or if I've just sketched something and haven't painted it yet, I'll be like, oh, I sketched it, it's gonna take 30 seconds to paint, and then it's more like 30, 30 minutes or three hours. And if I just procrastinate, it never gets done. And that can be hard for me to get back in the mindset. So I prefer to push through. Um, let's see. Actually, someone had asked this question at Christmas time, and I missed all of the things related to it. But what is your favorite book on art? I think Ray was asking for one of the Patreon rewards. <laughs> Sarah relates on a spiritual level. I'm glad because, you know, this is, we're in this together. We all have those stages. Ooh, there's more answers. Whoa. Giving permission when she feels like she should be cleaning or something. Ooh, good. The art out of a mundane task thing. It'll change you. It's not always easy to remember that. Janie says getting organized. It's easy to dash off small stuff, but it's hard to be disciplined and organized to work on bigger pieces. That's really valid. Um, 
Ray says, leave your creative window open if you can. Like, she's most inspired in the morning. Um, my inspiration is about as untrained as my dog. We have a hideous dog. May I tell you about him? He's barking at this moment. He was named after three prominent, intelligent, and very talented men. He got none of their prominence, intelligence, or talent. His name is Churchill Sherlock Lewis, or C.S. Lewis, and we call him Churchill. He's an idiot, and I don't like him. I'm not a dog person. I like other people's well-behaved dogs. Not mine. Um, the mythical Phoenix said getting inspired after coming home from work and wanting to just do nothing. <laughs> that was my first mistake. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. There are just so many people in my family and we boiled it down to three names and we couldn't decide between all of them and we figured out, <laughs> he should have been named Andy Kaufman. You know what? He should have been named, um, Arthur. Have any of you guys, sorry get excited. Have any of you listened to Cabin Pressure? Um, it's a BBC radio comedy. It is on the podcast app under the name of Cumberbund's Treasures. Um, but it is a radio comedy starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, and what are their names? Roger Allen, Benedict Cumberbatch, and I forget the rest of their names, but basically it is the plot of the entire 28 episode radio series is that it's these people, like four characters, the owner of an airline, um, her son, who's the steward, Benedict Cumberbatch's character, who is the pilot, and the co-pilot, who is an older guy and it is hilarious they have one plane in their airline so they refer to it as an air dot and Arthur Shappy is the son of the airline owner and he is an endearing delightful ridiculous man he's stupid as they come but it's so heartwarming and entertaining and it's a perfect thing to listen to. Um, Ray says I should pin it in a comment. I'm gonna really try to figure this out, so talk amongst yourselves while I try to pin. But it's Cumberbund's Treasures. Um, that's the name it's under on the podcast app. It is called Cabin Pressure, though. And the guy who plays the stupid idiot is the brilliant writer of the entire series. So it's amazing. I'm typing right now cabin pressure. His name is John Finnamore. That's what it is. Wow. Hold on. Cabin pressure. Cumberbins. Sorry, guys. I know just as much technology as I usually have to, to get by, and not much more. Hold on. On the podcast. Okay, I'm posting the comment. How do I pin it? Ray. Oh, pin it. I pinned it, guys. I pinned a comment. Yes. Okay. I pinned it. Now you can look it up for yourselves. Um, they go in alphabetical order. It starts with Abu Dhabi and ends with Zurich. And it is amazing. Take my word for it. Thank me afterward. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything we talked about or anything related to what I actually do? I think there's some confusion in the arts, too, about what I am, because my Instagram really doesn't reflect much of the fact that I illustrate, and then my illustrations don't reflect much of the fact that I'm a food writer and recipe developer, but it's okay. I'm okay with this. <laughs> It reminds me of the Veggie Tales Jonah. My father was a caterpillar, my mother was a worm, but I'm okay with that now. Um, and now you've heard me do a weird little accent. I hope I'm not the only one that has tea. It's frigid. It's like 24 degrees here in Virginia, which is unheard of. And I'm in the annexed bit of my house, which is like hovering at 50 something. So I'm under a very 
derelict comforter. I'm trying to stay warm. All right, well, I'm glad that all of you guys came and hung out. Um, I hope that this first Tuesday tips and treats was fun for you all. I had fun being with you. Thank you for your time. Um, I just hope that you guys remember that even if you don't consider yourself classically artistic, there's so much value in what you can create. And art really is all about creating something out of your own point of view. Um, oh, a British Bake Off impression. Sorry, I interrupted my goodbye to be crazy. Whoa, 15. What on earth? Why? What's with the cold weather? I love cold weather, but in moderation. Okay. Um, British Bake Off impression. Well, I always, I'm going to laugh because he terrifies me, but I'm going to do a Paul Hollywood impression. Okay. Real quick. This is something I brought up, a baker brought up for inspection. It's burnt. You can see it right there. It's burnt. That was horrible. Ray, I can't do it right now. I'm laughing inside and it's messing up my accent skills. I could do Mary Berry when she's like, oh, it looks a right picture. It looks very scrummy. There we go. Paul Hollywood I can't do because I'm scared of him. And I prefer not to dwell on that fact. He's got like these, mm, those eyes are like, I hate you and I'll melt you with my gaze while I burn your crust extra. Um, well, I'm glad that you all are having cold weather too because it makes it much more cozy to like virtually huddled together like little penguins so thanks for your time i will get off now and i will leave you to it